By midnight today, the third mainland bridge will be shut to allow for an engineering test. The closure, which was initially slated for last month, was moved to today owing to traffic concerns. Lately, there have been complaints regarding vibration, prompting another round of repairs. In this next report, our correspondent Olu Phillips takes a look at the developments surrounding the tests. Detailed iron work. Hot water blasting. Tons of cement. Thousands of man hour and engineering input. And of course, Channel TV's detailed daily report for three months were some of the features of the repair that took place in 2012 on the Third Mainland Bridge. Once again, the federal government has mobilized for another round of repairs. But first, it will undergo an engineering test for a period of three days, within which the bridge will be shot, and that will begin in a few hours from now. The three days closure of the Third Mainland Bridge for investigative maintenance test was earlier slated to begin on July 27th, but was shifted till midnight today. On a fairly good note, the 2012 exercise was managed traffic-wise, raising questions today as to the readiness of traffic officers when considering that all major alternative routes in the state had been taken over partially by trucks who have clearly defied directives, including a presidential order. How exactly the entire episode pans out will clearly be seen after the three days test run. As you may well know, actual repair works on the bridge will commence later this year, and by all indications, that will last beyond two months. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. Now we have about an hour and a half to the bridge closure. Let's take another look at any last-minute plans. And joining me is the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Transportation, Lagos State, Dr. Taiwo Salam. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Okay, now you're heavily involved, obviously, in the logistics yes. um, and all the planning up to a, a few Correct. hours now or, or so. Um, let's start off with how the ministry plans for ease of movement of individuals. Yes, uh, if you really look at it, as a reporter has already put it, you're supposed to have closed it on the 27th of July. But due to the issue yeah, that we have been having with the trucks, along that corridor of uh, Ikorodu Road and uh, Apa Oshodi Express, we cannot but to defy it this time. So with the cooperation of federal government now, we're going to shut down this evening, uh, this night by 0000 hours. So what do we have in uh, plan for motorists? Definitely, if you don't have anything to do in Lagos tomorrow or along that corridor, there is no need to embark on unnecessary journey. So we're going to have a Korodu road that's going to be free. You know, we have first and second circular route now. The first circular route is Kapta towards uh, Muritala Mohammed to, to uh, Jibong and then uh, Korodu, while the second circular is from Korodu road Western Avenue to Eco Bridge, Akwagmo. So those two houses will be available yes. for access to Lagos. The routes are there, but the question is the plan for commuters. We keep hearing about the park and ride, but nobody has actually explained how the park and ride is supposed to work. And this is going to start in, another, in a couple of hours, in an hour's time. Do you park at home, walk a bit, and then take the ride? Or do you drive a bit? And where are, the, where are the spots? What is the plan? I think that's what we're trying to ask. OK. Because tomorrow, there is nothing like a park and ride. But we're going to increase the buses that are going into Lagos. So people can take buses from anywhere. Oshodi, Agege, uh, Maichu, anywhere like that. And then they so can So they should park their cars the at home and the, take the buses? Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, okay. Let's look at um, something we hear um, should happen in terms of who is, is allowed to go out early. Uh, we hear that the traders have been asked to hold on a bit 
and allow heavy you know a movement yes. of other individuals to go yes do they know that how are you going to stop that and what you know this is in another hour so Correct. what what's the plan you see we've been trying to contact the traders like if you get to Idumota now from Idumota to Balogun to Martins they always display their way on the road that will not be possible tomorrow till we finish this job that corridor is going to be free we are displaying we are putting into account uh, into this action since around 50 uh, last month personnel we are having police that are joining us over a thousand police are going to join we also going to have frsc it's a combined effort to make sure that nobody displays their way we also have cbd involved so that nobody will display their way so that there will be free flow of traffic. Okay, we're talking about the traders that actually are going to the market to sell, not the ones who are displaying no, we, along we have, the way. We, we, How do you tell such people, oh, you know what, hold on, let other people go first? We, we have tried to approach them to resume 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and not like normal when they wake up like others and they want to come and display their way. We are very lucky the students are now on holiday, so that is out of it. But majorly, it's only that Friday and Saturday that we, we are envisaging a sort of challenges. Sunday is a very free traffic. Okay, so quickly now, my final question to you is what we can do as a state uh, and as a country generally to have alternative routes in terms of alternative bridges like the fourth mainland bridge. So that any time we hear third mainland bridge and repair, people don't become jittery and begin to look for how to book hotels on the island or on the mainland. You see, if you look at River Thames, that cross England into two. They have over 15 bridges there. And the distance of River Thames compared to the land use in Lagos, we only have in three bridges. So all we need to do is that more bridges are coming, but you know they are very, very expensive to build. And this one even that are built by the federal government, you know what it took, how long it took them to build a mainland bridge, which is to be the longest bridge now in Africa. So definitely such a thing. But in Lagos State right now, we are turning to water transportation. That's what we are going into. So okay. that we are moving people away from road to water. All right, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Transportation, Lagos State, Dr. Taiwo Salam. Thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. Tonight. Thank you. Let's go cross over to Abuja now. Here's Malkwe Ogun Yusuf. Malkwe. Hello, Ijoma. About 4.3 million jobs will be created with the National Competitiveness Policy for Raw Materials, Products and Services is fully implemented. This is according to the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Onu, who is speaking at a meeting in Abuja. He says the initiative would also help reduce importation by 10%, as well as save over 3 trillion naira for the next five years. What is needed? at this level of our implementation is a collective effort of key stakeholders with commitment through effective collaboration, cooperation, and coordination of various complementary roles for the common goal of driving Nigeria to a higher ranking. Yes import reduction of goods, thereby saving the country over 3 trillion naira in foreign exchange for the short-term period of just five years. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has disbursed 500,000 naira each to 20 young Nigerians who graduated from the UNESCO TAP project. The loan was presented to the beneficiaries by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Adejoke Orelokwe Adifuliri in Abuja, at the one-year celebration of the project. She says the UNESCO TAP project is a program that would help build Nigerian youths in leadership and economic capacity, self-management, and intellectual capacity. We want us to look at ways in which we can create more jobs. Uh, the gone are the days when you, you graduate and three jobs is waiting for you. You should be you now we are you are waiting for a job, but we have to find a way around it to be employer of labor ourselves. 
there's a limit to what government can employ. And the uh, economic recovery and growth plan of Nigeria government is working with the manufacturing company, and we are working also with the foreign uh, uh, invest investors to come to Nigeria to invest so that we can have job opportunities. We are talking to the local investors and we are talking to foreign investors. Some are in town now working with the Nigeria government to establish in Nigeria so that you can have job to do. And there's no doubt that we need more jobs and we must look at the possibility of creating more jobs for the benefit of uh, the young people of Nigeria. And in the spirit of the now concluded Eid holidays, culture and tradition have the potential to boost the economy of any state to, through tourism. And Kano State Northwest Nigeria seems to be exploring this by organizing its third annual cultural night. The state governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, says initiative to add the cultural night to the lineup of Eid celebrations by the Emirate Council has paid off by way of increased foreign investment across the state. Our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, reports. Culture and tradition have always been regarded as the identity of a society and its people, the absence of which may take it away from its history. In 1967, Kano State borders Katsina. That is why the Kano State government has called diplomats and foreign investors for the cultural night for the world to see what the state has to offer in terms of the history of its existence and what the future holds. The cultural night is organized by the state government in collaboration with the Emirate Council to promote the culture and tourism potentials of Kano State. Already a committee has been appointed to advise the government and the Emirate Council on how to improve the quality of the Salah celebrations and institutionalize the various aspects of the celebrations. According to the Emir of Kanu, Mohammed Sinusi II, given the commercial nature of the state, something as colorful as this is required to sustain the state's economy. Kano was historically the major center of trans-Saharan trade and the largest, actually the third largest city in Africa for centuries after Cairo and Fas. And our hope is to revive the industries, to revive the economy, to bring back the vibrancy to the city that it had for centuries. And so, diplomats, foreign investors, members of Kano business community and traditional rulers witnessed the powerful display of the Amias Royal Guards, known locally as Mbindiga. When the news at 10 returns, the central bank floats new long-dated corporate bonds uh, a program for Nigeria's agricultural and manufacturing sectors. That's on Business News. Do join us again.